Hi there, we're just waiting for a few more people to log in, so we'll, we'll start in the next minute or two. Good afternoon and uh, welcome to today's webinar from the Energy Saving Trust. Uh, charge ahead with electric bikes, so we're going to be discussing e-bikes today. My name is Heather Quinn, so I manage the Consumer Advice Programme and the Scottish Transport Team at the Energy Saving Trust. I'm joined with my colleague Kalina Stormont's darling. She manages the Low Carbon Transport Loan and Kalina will be handling the technical side of this webinar. So I'll just quickly cover some general points about webinars. You can hear us, but we can't hear you. This is perfectly normal, so don't be alarmed. The webinar will last approximately 45 minutes, and that includes a Q&A session at the end. You can ask any questions at any time throughout the webinar, just using your control panel. We'll answer them at the very end, but if it is urgent or you want a point, point of clarification, please, uh, please do let us know, and we'll, we will re raise it with the speaker. We will be recording this webinar as well and it will be available online so we'll circulate the slides afterwards and any re relevant information. We will also be posting two polls during this webinar so we'll give you a heads up when they're when they're coming up and you can uh, select relevant answers and vote and whatnot. And we're also joined today by two guest panellists. Uh, they'll be supporting us in the delivery of the webinar. And, and to help answer any of your questions, we've got MJ Somerville from Sustrans and we've got Ruri McClone from the bike station. So, yep, we'll just introduce what e-bikes are and then we'll, um, MJ and Ruri will both present and then we'll introduce some events where there's options used to test ride e-bikes as well and then we'll move on to our Q&A session. So the, who we are at the Energy Saving Trust, or EST as we're also known, was established in 1992. We're funded by the government and we deliver a variety of projects. Departments include renewable energy, home insulation, energy efficiency and sustainable transport. And our, our general aims are to reduce carbon emissions and save consumers and businesses money. And so we're hosting this webinar because the Scottish Government confirmed in this year's programme for government that £80 million will be dedicated to the active travel budget. So the previous year saw £40 million funding for active travel. So that increase in funding just shows that the Scottish Government and Transport Scotland are committed to helping everyone incorporate active travel in their lives. And EST are looking forward to working closer with Transport Scotland to help them achieve this. We will be introducing e-bikes as a sustainable travel option for many people and we'll do this by discussing both the benefits and the practicalities of using and owning an e-bike for your travel journeys. So let's firstly just clarify that when we're talking about e-bikes we're not talking about motorbikes. Um, for the purpose of this webinar, an e-bike is an electric pedal assisted bike, looks like a regular bicycle and pretty much functions like a regular bicycle as well. However, there is an electric motor present that helps power the bike. The electric motor only powers the bike as you're pedaling, and there's also, also a battery on board to supply the motor. The head unit or console can communicate with the electric motor, and this is where you select how much assistance, if any, the motor is gonna give you. And currently charging the battery from zero to 100% will cost between five and 10 pence. So that's less than one pence a mile. And the average mileage achieved from e-bikes can range between 20 to 70, even more miles on one full charge. That range will depend on how big the battery is and how much you spend on the bike. And there are uh, some, there is UK legislation out there for e-bikes as well. So. They are only road legal if the bike uses the pedals to propel it and the electric motor will not assist you traveling over 15.5 miles per hour 
it is worth saying you can absolutely travel faster, but you will be powering the bike yourself. And, the, and as long as the power does not exceed 250 watts. You also must be over 14 years old to ride it on the road and it cannot have a throttle or a booster to take you over 15.5 miles per hour. If your e-bike doesn't comply with these regulations, you must be registered, you must have insurance and you must be paying tax on the vehicle and you should also own a relevant driving license and wear a motorbike helmet when operating it. So we'll just, before we uh, move on to MG's slides, we'll just um, do a quick poll. So based on what you've heard, we want to know um, whether you think an e-bike would be suitable for you. So before we go into the benefits and the, and the barriers, just if you could take a minute just to vote quickly. Perfect. That's great. Well, it's good to see that most of you uh, do feel electric bike is suitable for you, but there's still a few people who don't know. So hopefully uh, this webinar will help um, help answer a few of your questions. So we'll just uh, we'll move on to um, a handover to our first guest speaker, MJ Somerville um, from Sustrans. Um, but we'll just get we'll just get MJ's slides up. We'll just we'll just be a moment there. Okay, over to you, MJ. Hello, thank you for having me. Um, my name is MJ Somerville. I'm the communities coordinator for uh, Sustrans for Active Travel Communities. I run a couple of different programs, including a cargo bike library, active travel hubs in Air and Kilmarnock, and uh, repair and information stations. I also work with behavior change and infrastructure. And just listed here some of the things that Sustrans Scotland does and we develop new walking and cycling infrastructure, behavior change and uh, influence policy. So who are e-bikes suitable for? Well, I would say everyone, um, specifically anyone with a long or hilly commute those who have health issues, be that age, um, temporary or permanent injury, or an illness which limits physical activity. Uh, those who do might not have changing or showering facilities at their destination, because on an e-bike, you tend not to exert as much energy, or those who need to make multi-stop journeys or to carry more kit, including children, shopping, or uh, gear with you. I just wanted to kind of make clear that when we're talking about who e-bikes are suitable for, that we're talking about sport, uh, transport, not sport. Um, so it is not cheating if people say we're making a smarter tra transport option that suits them and that we're not cycling the Tour de France. We're just all trying to get to our de destinations in an active, reliable and sustainable manner. So for myself, I took a week of community on an e-bike for this webinar, just to give a real life uh, experience um, commuting around Edinburgh. I live in Granton and I work in Haymarket. So I am lucky enough to uh, be on segregated paths the whole way. Um, first off, from the second I got on it, it automatically motivated me to do more, ride more and go further. Uh, instead of going directly home, I ended up riding all around town, um, up uh, Dundas Street, which literally disappeared into a flat road. Um, commuting became fun, relaxing and enjoyable. I didn't feel the uh, kind of rat race pace that I usually felt on my regular bike. Um, I found it made bicycling on a shared use path a lot easier because you were able to slow down for vulnerable path users and get back up to speed uh, relatively easily and quickly. You could also anticipate uh, people a bit better and slow down. 
Um, I felt I could concentrate less on the bike and pedaling, especially on hill starts and more on road traffic, especially at junctions. It was really nice to have that bit of a boost at a junction so you felt a little safer, safer around car traffic. Although I did find at some points drivers um, were anticipating a slower start. So, and that's something it, it, once um, this become a, a social norm, uh, people will get used to. Um, I got to work and didn't need to change and full of energy, my 425 feet of ascent on the way from Granton to, to Haymarket um, uh, wasn't as noticeable and I wasn't as tired. As I said, hills literally disappeared. It was really nice to stay in the saddle, keep with a, a regular good pedaling uh, cadence. Um, I still felt like I was hitting physical activity targets. Um, I definitely had more endorphins and energy and I felt like I was still physically active. Um, and in the end, I did replace some car journeys with the bike just because it was fun. It was easier and faster to get around town. Um, so with locking up your e-bike, which I know is one of the concerns that people have, uh, we it would lock up the similar way that you would lock up a regular bike just lock it up in a well lit and secure area um when i came here to ocean terminal i did look at different sheffield stands and found one that was visible um in a area where there's a lot of foot traffic and had a cctv camera directed towards it um it is a lot uh, similar to locking up a standard bicycle so we see in the picture I have a cable around the quick release wheel and I've attached it to a very immovable object um, with a very good quality D-lock, which has the gold solid secure um, emblem on it. And then I took the battery and the control pa panel with me. Um, and that, that way it just ensures that uh, the bike looks more like a regular bike sitting on the street than an e-bike. Um, if you want any further information on e-bike and e-bike use, there's two great articles on the Sustrans website. One is 12 Reasons to Ride a Bike, and the Breaking the Myths Around E-Bikes. Claire's story is a really interesting one of a triathlete who had an injury um, at the time and uh, their journey on electric bikes, which is quite interesting. Perfect. Uh, thanks, MG. Um, so we'll now hand over to our second panellist. This is Rory McLone from the Bike Station. So over to you, Rory. Hello. Hi. My name is Rory McLone. I work at the Bike Station in Edinburgh as the development manager. So we've got bike stations in Edinburgh and in Perth. And we work uh, across a network of uh, similar organizations in the seven cities. We do a piece of work called Cycle Friendly Sterling Partnership and with uh, Sterling Bike Hub and uh, Recycle Bike. We organize events, courses and engagement uh, to try and build the culture of a cycle friendly city. We're going to be doing, I think it's about 300 events through the um, cities. If you have a look out for hashtag Dr. Bike with social media, then you'll be able to follow when we're doing Dr. Bike events and come along and get your bike safety checked if you want to or get advice about uh, active travel. Um, for younger people uh, who are going through a tough time, we work with uh, Bike for Good and the Venture Trust, um, helping people overcome significant barriers of long term empl employment and uh, you can engage in a course with the Venture Trust and there's a, you can get a really decent bicycle and uh, equipment to go along with it. Uh, the main focus of uh, the bike station though and uh, other organisations in the Community Recycling Network scheme uh, is recycled bicycles and often with us we certainly have cycle training, maintenance training, fix your own bike sessions, Bellatrek training for mechanics and we work with other organisations in partnership and we try and do as much of the community engagement as we can do um, and that happens throughout Scotland I'd say. 
was about 26 other organisations in the CRNS, so worth having a look at. Um, barriers to um, making journeys by bicycle or by electric bicycle. So cycle skills, um, gaining the confidence to ride and communicate with other road and path users. There's useful resources through Cycling Scotland. They have a um, They have uh, courses for, for individuals and also uh, resources online as well. Um, for weather, get good waterproofs. For cycling with electric bicycles, I found that hill walking waterproofs are pretty appropriate, work fairly well. You don't need to have the best quality stuff if you're not going out there and doing a lot of uh, exercise. For difficulties uh, to overcome, um, often people need a little bit of support to get over um, how the gears and the uh, idiosyncrasies of the bike work but with the energy saving trust and sustrans and the other partners um, we feel sure that we'll be able to help you as from the perspective of uh, working with people with uh, a very wide range of bicycles um, we'd recommend to people that they get uh, something which is of better quality. Cheaper bicycles are manufactured to a price point and are less serviceable. The metal in the, in the bolts tends to be softer. And we try and steer people towards having uh, a better quality bicycle. You have a longer service life and you get more out of it as well. Thanks very much. Thanks, Rory. Um, so very touched, touched on, on a few barriers, barriers and then MG, MG also touched on a few and also how e-bikes can help overcome barriers to even regular cycling. So we've got another poll. Um, regardless of you know whether you're talking e-bike or bike, currently what do you think are your main barriers to taking up cycling? So hopefully everyone should have voted just now. So we'll uh, we'll show you the the results in that poll. Um. So infrastructure, distance and hills seem to be the well are the are the the highest answers there. The highest reasons. It's safety. Yep. Yeah, safety is a big one. Weather particularly relevant in Scotland, and health or age. Perfect. Um, so, I mean, I think it's really good if you can send through, you know, start sending through questions and um, we'll, we'll be moving on to the Q&A section shortly. So any relevant questions, start start thinking about them and send them through. But what we're going to quickly do is just let you know about a few events that EST will be hosting. You can come you and chat to us in a bit more detail face to face um, about e-bikes or any sustainable travel. But um, you can also have the opportunity to speak to e-bike retailers, local active travel organisations as well. There will be e-bikes available for you to try out and test ride on the day. You can have give, giving you a brief experience of what they're like and you can just look at the wide range of models available. So the first event coming up is for businesses um, and it's in Edinburgh on the 4th of May. It's called Greenfleet. So if you're considering buying an e-bike for your staff if you if you run a business or, or work with an organization um, and you're wanting to get um, e-bikes for staff or re even replacing a pool car with a cargo bike please come along and try some out and um, the registration uh, link is there the next event is evolution so this is open to anyone in Scotland. I should point out that all of these events are free to attend. So Evolution is on the 5th of May at the Royal Highland Centre in Edinburgh. And again, it's a great family day out. There's gonna be plenty of e-bikes there as well as electric vehicles. So it's not just that 
you know it's not just a car show it is just a, an e-mobility show as well and then the the next event is our EV road show so this is going to be in Inverness on the 12th of May again free to attend you can get tickets by following the link on on the slide this is great for anyone up north again a great family day out but it's suitable for everyone to attend so do um consider you know coming along and, and you can speak to us face to face and try out some e-bikes yourselves if you would like any more advice just in general about sustainable travel options for you you can call home energy scotland so that's a free advice service um, available to help households reduce their energy consumption save money on fuel bills so our trained advisors can cover anything from sustainable transport right through to energy efficiency in the home and renewable technology for the home as well uh, the service is managed by EST and funded by the Scottish Government and they'll be able to advise you on sustainable travel options for you. If you have any questions about the webinar, feel free to contact myself or Kalina. And also Ruri and MJ's um, details were on their slides. So as I said, we'll be circulating the slides. So if you want to ask them any questions, um, then you'll, you have their email address there as well. You can also visit our websites um, for for more information on so EST's website for sustainable transport programs. And if you want to see a bit more of the work that Sustrans do, and MG already mentioned some of the links specific to e-bikes, you can visit their website and as well the bike station and um, all the good work that they do. If you want to read more about their projects and the services, uh, that's that's their website there. And what I would also just say is in terms of um, you know programs and projects relating to e-bikes, I would just stay tuned, keep an eye out on social media and keep an eye out on EST's website. We are working closely with Transport Scotland to help households and organisations access sustainable transport options. And um, so hopefully there'll be more, you know, there'll be a lot more programs and projects to support accessing e-bikes in the future. So just stay tuned. Um, but we do have, um, you know, quite a bit of time left to answer your questions, which is good. We really wanted this webinar to be focused on your queries. So send through as many questions as possible. We'll try and get through them. Um, and so, yeah, if Kalina wants to start going through the questions. Sure, thank you very much. So we have received quite a few questions already uh, and I'll go through some of them for the time we have left. Um, first question uh, from one of our listeners is, um, do I take my battery um, when it rains? would like to Rory, maybe one uh, for yeah. you um, I've used electric bicycles in heavy rain so rain lasted for uh, about three hours or so and didn't experience any problems um, other colleagues at the bike station have done some river crossings uh, in, the, in the highlands and um, got a bit damp but things were okay I think it depends it's going to be quite specific to the model of bicycle as to the behavior of the system when it gets quite damp so you know i'd advise that you you test ride as much as you can do basically are there any covers for the batteries or the bike would that be of any help um for if the bicycle is left without the battery i gather that's the case yes i mean mostly i haven't uh, parked my bicycle up outside with uh, the, without these covers Another question, are they safe to buy secondhand? One of our listeners is asking. Um, that depends. I mean, sometimes you can get something with warranty, which so the warranty transfers from individual to individual. Um, yeah, I would, it, it would be the same way as buying a, a regular bike, I would say. I'm not sure if the warranty would go over but you would you would double check the same issues that you would check with a regular secondhand bike um, you can always go to your local bike shop or uh, stop into the bike station with with the bike or meet the person at a bike shop just to ensure that the bike is um, fully serviceable in good shape 
um, and and see. But uh, it just it, it's a depend on the bike, the the condition of the bike, and um, how and and where and how long the other person's been using it and how long the person's been using it for. Absolutely. Uh it's just off the back of what MG said, just looking at the, the different models out there, it seems that the life uh, the life cycle of the battery tends to be anywhere between 500 and 1000 charges. Again, it depends how much you're willing to pay for that battery, but that's something, as MG said, finding out how well used it is, how many charges has, has, has been made on that will determine how long that secondhand e-bike is going to last you. Uh, okay, and can we touch a bit more on maintenance? Sure. That's what one of our listeners would like to know more about. So maintenance in a general sort of a sense, keep the tires pumped up, keep the chain oiled and clean. Is there anything electric bike specific that our listeners should Store the bicycle about? indoors in a warm environment if you can, that will keep it nice and dry and it will stop uh, parts from corroding and deterioration of the electric motor would be my advice. Um, I would also say uh, have your bike serviced at an approved service centre for your electric motor type. So uh, Bosch has approved service centres, Shimano has approved service centres, um, Panasonic is coming but that way you know that the, the mechanics looking at your bike have been trained by the manufacturers to deal with any electrical issues that might come up. Thank you, MJ. And while we are still on maintenance, any thoughts on dealing with punctures? Um, it's only, isn't it the rear wheel quite heavy given the motor, so could be tricky uh, changing, repairing inner tube? Um, it's about the same as repairing an inner tube in any other kind of bicycle. I mean, electric bikes tend to have uh, puncture-proof tires, especially the ones designed for the city. And you do tend to have fewer punctures with these things, but it's, uh, it's a fact of life that if you um, ride a bicycle, you're going to get a puncture sooner or later. So our advice would be to uh, learn how to do it before you actually get a puncture. So practice in a go to a, a workshop or a practice in your house, uh, get somebody who knows how to fix a puncture to uh, show you. Um, don't, wait in, don't wait until it's wet in the cold outdoors and you're 25 miles away from home. That's guaranteed to result in a negative experience. Are there any good websites for comparing and contrasting e-bikes? Um, I would say uh, look at what you want first and figure out um, what type of bike you would like. Um, there are, if you Google electric bike on, on the internet, there are plenty of um, magazine articles, uh, reviews, Cycling Weekly tends to do reviews of e-bikes every once in a while, especially at this time of year when all the new models are coming out, you'll see a fair number of reviews. But it, it's also looking at what you're using it for, what's your main reason for having it, is it off-road mountain biking or is it commuting, um, and figure out what style of bike you'd like. Most major manufacturers now are doing a style of e-bike. So if you have a favorite manufacturer you like, if that's, you know, of the myriad of them, um, they, they would also um, have good tech specs of what you might be looking for. And can you get replacement batteries? How does that work? Um. Yes, usually for the, the larger manufacturers, the Shimano and Bosch ones, you can certainly buy replacement batteries. I think for some of the more um, generic brands, I suppose you could say, it might be a bit trickier. Um, so going back to the advice from earlier on, if you know that the, the bicycle that you're getting is from a, record, like a retailer who backs the stock, then you'll unlikely to have a negative experience with it. But if you buy something which is, you know, from the internet and doesn't have a support network, um, you're, you're taking more of a gamble. 
And there are a couple of questions about um, courses. So do you do cycle training for people who want to cycle in the city but aren't yet comfortable on the roads? Yes. Sustrans and the bike station both, both offer these forms of help. If you go to the Cycling Scotland website, there's uh, access to local cycle training. Um, if you go onto the Android store, which is the Play Store, or uh, you can get uh, Essential Skills, which is an app that Cycling Scotland have put together, which is really quite good. Um, cycle training is available across the country. Can we maybe provide that to our listeners after the webinar? As certainly, a, yes. certainly, perfect. Uh, and what about maintenance courses? Available from um, the CRNS network, uh, available from the bike station, uh, often available from Sustrans. Um, use the internet to do a search for local maintenance classes and you, things will be popping up all over the place. Um, you can also get a fair amount of maintenance courses through local authorities um, that do beginner courses. Uh, the majority of uh, e-bikes act are a regular bike with an additional motor system. So you are still looking at derailers, brakes, gears, punctures. So it's just adding uh, adding a motor. It's not actually taking anything away from a traditional bicycle. Thank you. And what sort of price are we looking at when thinking about electric bike? I've seen things from £300 up, but um, most of the things that I would think about getting would be probably a bit better specced. And, I mean, £1,000 can buy quite a nice bicycle, I would suggest. Uh, but if you spend a bit more, you'll get something which is, is really nice. I recommend trying a few different things before you buy. And it's also worth saying that there's you, for some models, you might be able to get a more powerful battery. That means that you'll get a greater range. But with that, that will increase the price. Um, but you can also maybe get a model that has a longer, the, the battery will get more charges out of it. But again, that will increase the price. So it depends what you are looking for. As Rory said, and as MG has touched on, think about what you want. And then it is worth might be worth considering spending a little bit more. And how do you charge the battery of an electric bar bike? Maybe discuss the um, charging and the battery a bit more. Um, it, you can charge it uh, multiple ways. It also depends on what type of bike you have. So if we're looking at ones with the Shimano system, you can take the battery off and charge it inside. It's a regular plug that just goes into the wall and charges the battery that way. You don't have to remove the battery from the bike to charge it as well. You can charge it on the bike. Um, and there are some models where the battery is now integrated into the frames and those you would just connect directly into the bike. Is there any public charging or is that something for the future, do you think? Um, definitely something for the future. Uh, the difficulty with public charging for e-bikes is there are so many different models of batteries with different connectors. So it would still mean that you would need to carry your connector into the plug. To, uh, for the time being anyways. Um, when it becomes a social norm, there might be charging stations that would have multiple connector points for what type of battery that you would have. And how easy it is to remove a battery pack? Are they heavy and how long do they take to charge? Um. So how easy it is to remove it and are they heavy? They're all specific, so you have to learn how to do them. Um, but easy, yes, definitely. Um, are they heavy? Probably about a couple of kilos, I guess. Um, Is it like a certain lock? How, how do you attach it? Um, yeah, it's usually a key that you have to sort key. of like carry with you to detach the, the battery from the system. And some slot out 
uh, forward, some slot out sideways, like the Shimano ones slot out sideways and the Bosch ones come out forwards. And the usual weight of a battery, how much would that add to the weight of your bike? About two kilos, I'd say. Because the next question is, how heavy are e-bikes and can I carry them up flights of stairs? Um, we weighed a few bicycles. Um, the electric mountain bike I've been using over the last period of time weighs about 28 kilos, so um, which is a, a, a factor if you have to lift it over um, fences or whatever else. So it's doable, but they are quite heavy to lift over your head. And yeah, sorry. Oh, oh and, and I would say, say again, that, that depends on the quality of bicycle you get. Yeah. The higher quality of bicycle, the lighter they will be. Yeah. The lower quality of bicycle, the heavier it will be, which is just the same as a standard bike. Mm -hmm. There was so the, uh, the battery was three kilos, total weight eighteen kilos. Nice. And actually sitting within a 1700 pound price point for their for their beginner model. That's good. So there was a, a part of that question was about removing the battery, charging it and how long it charges for. Um, again, completely depends on the size of battery that you've bought um, in terms of how long it char takes to charge, depends on what state of charge the battery is at as well. If it's at zero, it's going to take longer than if it's at 50%. But from zero to 100, it tends to be about around about four hours for your standard e-bike battery, just from um, researching the different models available. Um, again, it varies, but if you're, if you're speaking to any retailers, they should know the answer specific to the model. Thank you. And... What is the range of a standard e-bike? I know we've touched on that uh, earlier, but maybe it's good to um, mention it again to make it clearer. Heather? So again, just from looking at different, I looked at a variety of different types. I looked at hybrid bikes, um, fold-up bikes, cargo bikes. I looked at the the cheapest I could find. I looked at the most expensive I could find. I looked at a broad range and um, the the smallest range was quoting 20 20 miles um, and the about standard in terms of I would say within 2,000 pounds was up to about 70 plus but there was bike there were bikes for about 3,500 that were you know posting you know 120 140 mile range mm -hmm. but that might potentially be out with people's uh, purchase price and what they're willing to pay. Um, it, as well, on range, it depends what mode you've got your bike in. So we said the head unit in the console will determine how much assistance that bike gives you. So there's different modes. So eco mode or turbo, right up to turbo mode. Um, there's potentially three to five different modes available. And for example, eco mode will, will get you up the hills with, with little effort, but it's not going to be a big drain on the battery. Whereas turbo mode, the entire journey will be next to no effort for you. The bike will be assisting you a lot. You have to keep pedaling, but it will be assisting you a lot and you'll be exerting little effort. And however, that's quite energy intensive. So your range will not be as great as if you were maybe on eco mode, for example. Um, from using the e-bike for a week, I had a Shimano um, system. I charged it once and I do about 10 miles round trip for a commute. So it, it charged once within a week for a regular commuting. Um, and that was on the normal range. Um, the normal is, it sits well. The turbo, after you hit the 15 miles per hour, you're on your own speed anyways. So it kind of cuts out. So on a good standard normal, I got a full week out of it without having needing to charge. Perfect. Can we talk a bit more about what kinds of e-bikes are out there? We touched a bit that there are mountain bikes. I know that there are some folding bikes. What, what, what kinds are out there for people to choose from? Well, as many of bicycles are out there at the moment, so different styles. We have load-carrying bicycles, a lot of interesting stuff going on there. 
um, hybrid bicycles. The bicycle MJ was talking about with the lightweight was a, a, a cyclocross bike, wasn't it? Um, you can get racing bicycles, um, uh, which will give you a bit of pedal assist. And you know, if you want to go and do that alpine climb, that the, doesn't matter how fit you are, you, you can go off and you can do it now. Um, I've been using uh, uh, electric mountain bikes, and I, I have to say that they're, they're fantastic. Uh, I was not going um, going off and doing mountain biking because I thought, oh gosh, I'm just not fit enough. Um, but now I'm back into it, back into a routine of doing it and enjoying it a lot. So a lot of benefits. And probably one of our last uh, questions, how does the weather affect the performance of the battery? If it's colder, the battery seems to last not quite so long, but um, it depends on circumstances. Um, I think for a for general Scottish weather, it's it's a it's a, basically a non-issue. Um, I'm Canadian. I come from minus thirty. That would be an issue. Um, but for anything between, I'd say zero and upwards, um, the battery shouldn't be affected. But anything it would do is just the battery wouldn't last as long. All the bikes work as a regular bicycle, so you would never really be completely stuck um, if the battery did die. Um, they come with a range of gears. You still have nine or in some models, 18 to 20 gears um, to use. So maybe the, the journey home might be a bit slower, um, but it, it's still possible. So the, the bicycles don't um, completely, if the, the motor isn't running, you can still use it as a regular bicycle. I think that um, covered most of the questions we've received. Perfect. Yeah. Um, yeah. We've got no other questions, but um, if you have, if you think of any questions in the meantime, we'll be distributing the slides, and you've got all four of our email addresses addresses on there. So feel free to to drop us an email. We will be also sending out the essential cycling skills. Uh, in a PDF format that Rory mentioned, that's from Cycling Scotland. Um, so if uh, if you want to download it on the app, you can do as well. If you want to look at it online, that's fine. Um, but a big thanks to MJ Som Somerville from Sustrans and Rory McLone from Bike Station for supporting us today. It was really informative and I'm really pleased that we got to get through sort of all your questions um, and that we got a good range of questions as well. I've definitely learned loads of new things <laughs> today too. So thanks for registering. As I said, we'll send out all the slides and the relevant information in the next couple of days via email. So thank you.